On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about how to train your dragon, but a lot about Star Wars. Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 204 for Thursday, the 28th of February, 2019. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Kent. Normally with me is Amos, but he's out this week. So we get the lovely Stephanie, a.k.a. Sassian. Steph, how you doing? I'm doing great. Life is good. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it's been a while since you've been on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the last time was... It was a Doctor Who episode, and it was, I don't even think you were at episode 100 yet. Yeah, it was a, it was a while ago. I mean, if you don't count, like, I showed up on the stream with Bono once or twice, but. Yeah, I mean, you make an appearance it, it, uh, now and again, especially, yeah. like, in post shows and things like that. Uh, but being a proper guest or co-host on the show, it's been, it's been yeah, a while. It's been a bit. Um, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. So last time, <laughs> last time we talked about Doctor Who, we're going to talk about Star Wars mm-hmm. this time. Um, we'll start. We'll sterile spacey geek nerds. Yeah. So b- before we get into Star Wars, though, um, just uh, get us caught up. It's it's been a minute since you've been on the show. So what what do you got going on yeah. lately? Um, right now I'm looking for you know that forever you know place that I'm going to be that I have to earn money. <laughs> oh, a job. Actually, like pay bills <laughs> and do things like that. And well, why why are you looking for a job in earnest now? I don't wanna. Why why are you looking for a job in earnest now as opposed to like I don't know a few months ago? Because I graduated from high school. <laughs> from high school. <laughs> Good lord! I, I mean, I robbed the cradle and all, but like not that severely. <laughs> um, no, I graduated uh, with my bachelor's degree in business administration, and I decided that I needed to be back in the workforce, and I deserved more than retail, so it's a little more difficult to find a job that yeah. isn't um, retail in this time. Right. So yeah. I'm being picky and taking my time, but right. we'll see how it goes. I'm not complaining, though, because I get to stay at home and be in the wonderful sun <laughs> You know, we we have been getting some sun lately. It was 72 today. 72 degrees today. Yeah. Opened all the windows in the house and it was budimus. Yeah, Loved it. man, I was stuck at work. Every time I would go outside, though, it was just absolutely gorgeous. It's been cold here lately. Well, OK, I say cold, but people in the Midwest <laughs> and on the East Coast are going to get mad at me for saying cold it. is a it's relative term. <laughs> I mean, we've had 40s and, you know, it would dip in the 30s at oh, night. Oh, it would but... drop. It would drop down to like 19 or 18 every once in a while at night. Right. But I mean, just recently, like in the last week, we've had like low 40s and things like mm-hmm. that. So being in the mid 70s is a very nice change. Yeah. And it turned into basically my backyard is now knee high weeds. <laughs> yes, we can't grow grass for crap, but we can grow the hell out of some weeds. So if anybody wants some weeds, not weed, but weeds, weeds. <laughs> we got you covered. We got you. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we did go see How to Train Your Dragon. Sunday night. Yep. Yeah. So How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, which is the third installment mm-hmm. of the How to Train Your Dragon series. What were your thoughts about that? You know, I loved the movie. Loved the theater experience even more. And so why do you point out that you love the theater experience? I'm such a nitpicky person and I get very distracted. If someone's sitting next to me and they're eating candy, Kent, (laughs) I understand that he's eating candy and it registers in my mind and I'm not thinking about the movie. Takes you out of the experience. Yeah. Or if I'm hearing people talk, I I listen to them instead of Mm. watching the movie. So I miss probably like three minutes of Dr. Strange because there was a drunk guy sitting three mm. rows next to us and it's like... Well, yeah, I mean, I think that <laughs> most of the people in the theater lost some some Dr. Strange because of that guy. That guy was obnoxious and yeah. loud. <laughs> but no, for How to Train Your Dragon, because it was a 9.30 p.m. show time mm-hmm. on a Sunday night, yep. there was literally probably a dozen people if that, in if the that. theater. Yeah, there was probably like, yeah, eight 8, 10, 12, something like that. Yeah. Very few people in there. And I would probably say the youngest person I saw in there was probably t- a 10-year-old who knows to shut up. Yeah. In the movie. <laughs> shut your damn mouth. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm 
picky when it comes to the theater. So most of my movies that I go see, unless they're super engrossing and it's like a moment, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I hear everything else and what everyone else is saying. So, so what do you think about the movie? You said you liked it, right? Oh, I would loved you, it. You, you would recommend it to... <laughs> go watch it. Everyone. Everyone? Go. Yeah. It's not just a kid's movie. If you enjoyed the first two How to Train Your Dragon movies, yeah, I recommend it. It's pretty much what you would expect from that series. Uh, no, um, like, tonal differences or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it's still a PG yep. animated film, So, but it's well worth your time. Yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, there's, some, there's some moments with some feels. Oh, the feels. Uh, so if you, if you like movies that, uh, you know, just make you feel feel good about being a person like definitely go check it out <laughs> it's it's pretty good uh, but if you guys like this show the ritual misery podcast i encourage you to go over to patreon.com slash ritual misery show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck uh we've we've got all kinds of uh Did you just made that up no no i've been saying that forever <laughs> Shit, that's how you that's how you know i don't watch your show <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we we try to give some uh, uh, patron exclusives over there. There's some uh, exclusive interviews. The patrons get early versions of our shows. Uh, you never know what's going to pop up in there, uh, but I'd encourage everyone to go check it out. And you know, if you if you can spare a buck, we'd love to have it. Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery. All right. Stephanie, I'm going to go ahead and play an audio file here. Um, it's not entirely accurate, but uh, it, it's it's for the segment. So here we go. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. So normally that's the intro to a game that I came up with that I give to Amos or Amos and our guest. And uh, I, I didn't, I didn't this week. He I didn't, didn't, I didn't do a game. He I was, didn't make a game. He was too busy not doing OBS <laughs> things and setting all of this up so we can have a <laughs> seamless show. No, no, no. Stephanie spent seven hours doing this freaking quiz. <laughs> <laughs> seven hours. I, it usually takes me like 30 minutes because that's all the time that I oh, allot myself. Squid finally noticed <laughs> i was waiting for the so person. squid so squid in the twitch chat says why does your door look like a tatooine or cloud city doorway oh um yeah so this is we're actually sitting in uh on tatooine we are in the, the in, lars homestead we're in amperu's kitchen yeah we're sitting in amperu's kitchen um i don't know if you can I don't know. There's some blue milk around here somewhere. It's over there. Yeah. That way. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, it, it's pretty cool uh, here on Tatooine. You talked about the, the sun being out and it's warm. I mean, you Actually, would expect we, that on we Tatooine. We are pretty right? much on Tatooine right now compared to the rest of the U.S. I think we are on Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, we are in the desert. So, <laughs> all right. So you made a game. I did. I did make a game. So here are, I have one rule for this game. Okay. For you. One, obviously, don't look at my screen. Of course, of course. Um, Two, when you're saying what you have to say for the answer, you have to use the character's voice. Oh, dear God. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm into it. I'm into it. Okay. So... I've heard a lot, you know, I just told you guys I'm I'm trying to get a job. I've, I've heard a lot of people being like, you know, it's the first impression. That is the lasting impression. However, I'm of the opinion that it's the last that you see of something or someone that is the lasting impression. Okay. So I want to see which one is true. (laughs) Squid in the chat says Kent's fuck. Um, Yeah, probably. probably. This should be interesting. (laughs) Because there's at least one female voice in here. (laughs) Okay. Okay. All right. So basically the quiz is called We're All Dying to know first and last words first and last words okay so spoiler alert a little morbid all of these characters are dead okay so so let me get this straight i'm supposed to say the first line that the character says and the last line the character says so when the when the when they're introduced in the film Oh my God, this is going to be so hard. And then their deaths. 
sentence. Basically. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. All right. I'm, I'm curious to see because it is that first impression that you get. Is it really what they said? And is it the last thing that they actually said? Okay. All right. Ready to do this. What, what you got? Who, what, what's what's my first character? All right. So we have Han Solo. What's his first thing that he says in episode four? Oh my god. Okay. Um, so I'm picturing him looking all cool and badass in the in the cantina. Uh I I wanna say that he was being very like sarcastic. He said something like, like the fuck you mean you never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Ooh, but that wasn't it. No, no, oh. that's like the second sentence. <laughs> uh, so, so I think he said, um, um, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> he said, um, Han Solo, Captain of the Millennium Falcon. Oh, dear God. <laughs> all right, yes. So, yes, there's more uh, to it. However, I'm giving him that because that just is like... All right, all right. So then his last his last words his death sentence. Uh, it's got to be something like uh, "God damn it, son!" <laughs> Didn't I tell you not to run with lightsabers? <laughs> something like that. Uh, what did your mother tell you? I, right. Oh my god. <laughs> what was his last line? I mean, was it was it? Uh, do I need to do I need uh, to lead you into it? <laughs> Kylo says, "I father, I, I, I or he didn't say father, but he said I need you to to help me with something." Yeah, and he then he says, "I'll do what." Oh my god, anything! I think he said anything. Yes. Oh my god, that took me long enough. You got half of it. He said yes, anything. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm gonna get deduct right. points because you weren't saying it in Harrison Ford's accent. Oh shit! Does Harrison Ford have I, was an I accent? was I not saying? I, I thought I was. I thought my normal no. voice sounds like Harrison Ford <laughs> because I I grew up like idolizing Han Solo and I I thought like well yeah I mean, of course I mean I look just like him I sound well, no, just like him. He comes up he's like Han Solo, Captain of the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> yeah. Chewie here says you're looking for passage to the Alderaan system. Yeah, yeah. So I I think you I think you sound more like Harrison Ford than I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one. Um, this one, I'm intrigued if you're actually going to get it because okay. it's, a, it's a newly introduced. It's from Solo. Okay. Okay. L337. Do you remember her? Yes. So that's the droid. That's uh, So L337 is kind of a nerd in joke because that is like nerd speak for elite, which means elite or like hacker, <laughs> hacker code or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Um, so what is her opening <sighs> sentence? <laughs> oh my God. It was something snarky as hell. Oh, it was. Ah, <laughs> oh, geez. See this one. I'm, uh, I don't even, I wouldn't even know where to guess. All um, right. All right. I'm just going to stop you there. Okay. <laughs> Ready for it. So the droids are fighting. Oh, in the, everyone's uh, betting on it. Right, right. Okay, yeah. Yep. And she says, no, not acceptable. Ah, uh, yes. Stop exploiting droids, you slimy. And then Lando goes insane and takes her away. <laughs> okay, yep. That, that. She is the activist. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. Okay. And then her last her line, line th yeah. that would have been on the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, Millennium Falcon. Let me learn how to speak. <laughs> Um, let's see. She probably said something to Lando. Her last words were probably to Lando. Oh, you got the first sent. You got the first word right. Oh, Lando. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's probably something like I don't know, Lando, honey. I'm dying here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's actually more touching than that. Okay. <laughs> I figured it would be. She's a droid. Come on. She's got feelings. <laughs> Bad Weave says, what the hell's an aluminum falcon? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Words coming out of my mouth. She actually, be oh, spoiler, she becomes the Millennium Falcon. Right. Um, Lando, what's happening to me? Oh, crap. Okay. 
Yeah. Because she was basically like slicing that. Yeah, that that tracks as well. It okay. Was, it was very like, no, oh, no, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but obviously she speaks a strange dialect because in Empire Strikes Back, 3PO points out that I he's I don't, what, what, I, don't, what do you say? I don't know where your your ship learned how to speak. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where your ship learned how to communicate, but <laughs> yeah, something. It, yeah, so the speaks it, of it, yeah, whatever it, tra- it was. It something tracked. Like it tracked. It was cool. Um, okay, so let's <laughs> skip around a little bit here. Okay. Uh, Qui Gon. Let's go to episode one. Okay, so quite. Oh my god, Qui Gon. It's Jin. been so long since I've seen episode one. And this is literally within the first like uh, minute. Yeah. After so the, he says something like, "I um, don't even know it's him yet." Uh, I hope the negotiations are short or something like that. No, that was that was Obi Wan. Um, literally, we didn't even see that they were. T- they, take me to the ambassador. Nope, we didn't even see they were Jedi yet. Yeah. We didn't even see. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, take me to the ambassador. Nope. So, okay. No, it's Captain. Tell them we wish to board at once. Uh, okay. That's right. I told you this is before we even knew what they were. Right. Yeah. And his, obviously, his death sentence, his last, his last line. Oh, my God. Uh, something like. By the way, okay. Uh, I am excluding ghosts. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's while he's in his corporeal form yep. and he's dying from being uh, uh, stabbed by Darth Maul. I think it, his last words had something to do with training Anakin. So he said something like, the boy must be trained. I want to push it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to do an impression, right? So... So I'm trying to. You're uh, trying to be Liam Neeson here. Yeah, I know. The boy must be trained. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Uh, he is the chosen one. He will bring balance. Train him. Damn it! I should get half credit for that. <laughs> I'm giving you kind of credit. <laughs> I right. could have cricketed you. Come on. All <laughs> right. Okay. <clears throat> um. All right. So Rogue One. Okay, okay. We got another snarky droid. Yeah, okay, so that'd be K2SO. K2SO. Okay. His introduction was, I'm going to give this to you because I had to rethink really hard where his introduction was. Okay, so I think I think his first words were, you're being rescued. Something like that. If that's the, the, uh, I'm just going to do it. Okay, okay. <laughs> So, yes, congratulations. You're being ah, rescued. Congratulations. Please right. do not resist. <laughs> right. Because yeah. this was in Jen was running out of yep. the, and the he, thing. Yeah, and he clotheslined her, basically. He freaking threw her on the Oh, that's ground. right. He basically choke slammed her. He choke slammed yeah. her. <laughs> no, did you know that wasn't me was freaking hilarious. And she's like, yeah, of course I did. When she shot another droid that looked just oh, like right, him. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yep. So his final, his final words. This made me out of all the things that happened in Rogue One, this is the one that made me tear up the most. Yeah. What did he say? Uh, let's see. So he was basically covering their escape. He was covering Cassian and Jen's escape when they were stealing the Death Star plans. And uh, gosh, he said something like, go on without me. Not his uh, final words, but... Ah, uh, jeez. Oh my gosh, it was something very touching. <gasps> Bad weave! Is that the line? Oh, you were a dick! <laughs> Is that the line? That's the line from Serenity. <laughs> okay, so Bad Weave in the chat. So you have to remember we have audio listeners that can't see the chat. So Bad Weave in the chat oh. writes, I am a leaf on the wind. Watch how I soar. Yeah, you're... Um, it's the same actor. <laughs> you just pulled my heart out. <laughs> that was the uh, the death line for um, for Wash, <laughs> yes. uh, played by Alan Tudyk, Tudyk uh, who, pl- who played K two S O K two S O. Yeah, so I, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember his last line. Some something he did say something it's, about it's um, one word. It's one word, literally one word. Okay, what was it? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> 
That's why I don't remember it. <laughs> it's not a memorable line. For, for a droid to say goodbye was just like, oh. Oh my gosh. Max Strobot says Casio keyboard was the best character. <laughs> I know. Bad Weave, I have a really soft spot for, for all of my, my Firefly people. Oh yeah. yeah. Especially Wash is kind of a special. He's my hero. Guy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So who so do we have next? We did that one, that one. I'm not even marking if you're getting this right or not. <laughs> all right. You're not. You're going, <laughs> you're just going to give me a score. Like, ah, you uh, <laughs> screw it. Point and a half. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. So you did the two droids. You did Han Solo. Ooh, Yoda. <sighs> oh, geez. Um, Away, put your weapon. I mean you no harm. Ah, no, that was not. That uh, that was his second line. That was his second line? Oh, yep. my gosh. Because uh, Luke was saying, you know what? It feels like. Oh, it feels like what? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Feels like what? Yay! And then you have to scream because he screamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just trying to do a Frank Oz impression. He got one right. <laughs> I had to lead you there. Okay. It was a uh, probably sounded more like Miss Piggy than Yoda, but uh, <laughs> Frank Oz. Miss Piggy. <laughs> he did the voice for for Miss Piggy as well. <laughs> okay, um, Kermy. I would feel <laughs> so bad for you if you don't get. There's a whole paragraph that he said before he died. Right. If right. you do not get any of this right, so his his last actual sentence mm -hmm. was. There is another. Wait, hold on. There is another Skywalker. So that was his final line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a whole. But he had a whole. Thing, he had a whole yeah. soliloquy. Yeah, and he was like, "Yeah, your father, he is," and blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go to Sh the dark Shame side. it is to face him, you must, and all this other stuff. Because yeah. as he's crawling into bed and being all old and <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and by the way, the the the, the voice is yeah, pretty close, but but it was there is another sky, sky, walk. Yeah, yeah. So he says sky twice. Anyway, okay. We're just getting super. Geeky <laughs> a little Moving bit, a little bit. Moving on. All right. We have the. Last one, the coup de gras. <clears throat> okay. Luke Skywalker. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Episode uh, four, introduction. Yeah. Um, Luke. Coming, Aunt Beru. Luke, Luke. No, he never said coming, Aunt Beru. No? Nope. I watched it three times okay, today okay. to make sure. Damn it. All right. So you, oh my gosh. All right. So, um, Luke, make sure you tell yeah, Uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, geez. If he gets a translator, be sure it speaks Bashi. Okay, I'll remind him. Or, okay, Aunt Baru, I'll remind him. Something like that. You know, you got the kind of innocence whiny voice. <laughs> However, that's not the line. <gasps> Damn it. And I'm actually disappointed because, like, New Hope is your thing. Oh, oh, it doesn't look like we have much of a choice, but I'll remind him. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, which one was it? We got the both. <laughs> Damn. I didn't even know I could do both at the same time. But we did both because you got it wrong the first time. And oh, okay. You, yeah. All right. Oh All yeah. Right. I was supposed to go to Taji Station to pick up some away. power converters. And now <gasps> in episode eight, mm, what his final line was his final line? And I'll give you a hint. He spoke it to Kylo. He said it to Kyle. Yeah, he said something like, um, "Like I'm gonna haunt your ass." It was kind of, a, it was kind of a. <laughs> as Steph chokes on her tea, he basically told him, he, he kind of echoed what Obi Wan said in Episode Four to Darth Vader when he said, "Like you know, strike me down and I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine." But he said it in in just gruntled old man Luke fashion. Which he basically told Kylo Ren, I'm going to fucking haunt your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling him he's totally wrong right yeah, now. Yeah. Ah, jeez. Oh, it's so much lighthearted than that. Come on. Was it? I mean, yeah. it was kind of. <sighs> Literally his last sentence. Yeah, like, see you around, kid. Oh, my God. 
God. Is that it exactly? Yeah. Uh, what the hell? I literally pressed the pause button. All right. <laughs> Was it see around kid? Yeah. Oh see, my God. See around kid, and then he disappeared, <laughs> and then he he disappeared in real life. Like his projection disappeared, and then he disappeared in yeah, okay. on, on his rock. All right. So yay, congrats! <laughs> I gotta get some milk. Yeah, um, bad we said I I I got. I got to go milk them weird ass creatures again. Peace out, kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised. You, yeah, you, you kind of did not like enchant the old man grouchy voice when you said <laughs> see around, kid. Right. Um, but I'm a little surprised that you couldn't. Like, I know I made it a little harder than what I could have because I had like, I had like. Emperor Palpatine in here at one point. I had Obi Wan, and I had like Mace Windu. Yeah, I, I think most characters would be just as hard as another for me because just trying to remember first line and mm-hmm. last line. Yeah, would you? Did, I mean, you got most of them incorrect. <laughs> I'm not yeah, gonna lie. I mean, I was in the I was in the ballpark. I think for for at least yeah. the majority yeah. of them. I mean, some of that was a legend. That was a fun game. Yeah, that was a fun game. But I mean, like. Um, First impressions, last impressions, which yeah. one are better? Like, yeah, neither. I I liked it. Uh, Bad Weave says at least he didn't say yeet. Uh, yeah, Ooh. that's what the kids these days say. <laughs> it's like the new fuck. It's one of those words that can just mean uh, whatever you want it to mean. We always said aw snap. <laughs> when you really saying when you like you say snap in class, and then we we're really being like aw fuck. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so that was a long quiz. Sorry, everyone. No, the, the quizzes tend to be hard. The, the, one of the longer segments on the show. All right, so let's real quick talk about some uh, some new stuff going on in the world of Star Wars. Um, Disney, as was announced a long, long time ago, is adding a Star Wars themed park. Yay! And uh, it's not it's it's no it's a, an expansion to the already existing Disney World and Disneyland in right, Florida right. and California. So it's called Galaxy's Edge. It's fourteen acres of nothing but Star Wars. Yeah, oh, fourteen acres. My God, <laughs> they so <sighs> in in this summer it opens in California, and this winter it opens in Florida. <laughs> You need to take me to California so I can have my lifelong dream. I put him somewhere. He's gone. He's not here. So I can hug Chewbacca. Yeah. So this this place is going to be this place is going to be absolutely amazing. Not only is there just a lifeline, a life size sets, life size, uh, like replicas of the Millennium Falcon, uh, several other ships, all kinds of things. The thing that I am most looking forward to, which I mean, just walking through this place, I will be a child and probably like cry when, oh, I, so many, when I enter the So many people will just be area. like, oh, this is more for the adults who grew up with Star Wars yeah. than the kids. Because the, the kids are probably going to be like, I don't care that they have replicas of lightsabers and the costumes and all of this stuff. Like, no, we care. <laughs> yeah, but what what I am the most looking forward to is the ride that they're going to have. I don't remember what the name of it was, uh, but it basically out of four, it's kind of like four rides in one. I was about to say out of fourteen where, acres, there's only one ride. Well, no, 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 no. There's 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 all kind. They're <laughs> they're going all out. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Uh, but there's this ride. I wish I knew the name of it right now. But basically, you you become a character in your own little Star Wars story, and you you get on a ship and you you fly to some place and then you get captured by the first order and then like it's this whole it's this whole experience and there's like like I said there's like four rides as a part of it plus you're like acting out this this whole thing and like I think Ray comes to rescue you or something like that and like me? like there's a there's a whole just thing and I Oh, and oh, and here's another. So here's another thing. Oh. So this is some first Chewy. for um, for Disney parks. They're actually going to have benches in the line because the, they they know that the line is going to be like seven billion for freaking miles long, hours long. Like everyone's going right. to 
So they're going to have benches and the entire line, you're like in a corridor, like this really long corridor that has things to do and see in the line itself. So it's like you're, you're visiting a museum and you get to see as pieces you, of it as you as go you wait through in line to go. Yeah. To and like these ride. benches are like, do they move? Well, no, I, I would, actually, I don't think they move, <laughs> but like, as much. you move through this, this area, there's like, the, you're basically on a star Wars set as you're moving through the scene and there's like, you know, old like runes from you know, like the star Wars universe. And like, you know, you move to a different area and it's a different type of setting. Squid actually uh, just said, yeah, there's a 20 minute pre-ride to the ride. Yeah. I think no it's doubt. more than 20 minutes. Considering probably, yeah. That's probably, probably going to be like, <laughs> it's probably going to take you like three or four hours waiting in line. Oh yeah. It's, ride. it's going to be insane, but it is, it is part of the fast pass. So you can like reserve times and stuff like that. So, uh, benches of the rebellion. That's amazing. Patty. Yeah. Star, star Wars benches of the rebellion. Looking forward to that. I wanna okay. See, I want to see that movie. All right. So more, more, uh, star Wars news. We've got a new video game yes. coming soon. Mm hmm. Uh, from the wonderful folks at EA. <laughs> I can't even get through that without snickering. Okay, you know, it's and it's weird because I didn't think it was EA because everything I've read about this, they have always come out with Respawn Entertainment. Right. Is actually the which one is, putting this out. Which is a studio that's like subsidiary to EA. And yeah, my apologies. I didn't know that. But yeah. Maybe so, that's why they're putting it out that way. Well, I'm hoping that this... Stigma. I'm not really familiar with Respawn's work, like their past work. So I don't, I, I don't have anything to compare it to. But I'm really hoping that they... Uh, they don't give it the, the standard EA treatment, yeah. right? The, like, you know, the, the loot up. boxes and like half-ass released games. Well, and okay, so this this one and what they basically said it's going to be, it's uh, a Padawan who escaped Order 66. Right, so the game is called Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, so a, Pad a Padawan escapes Order 66. And then explores the galaxy in, mm -hmm. in this action adventure type game. So to me, it kind of seems it's more, more legend of Zelda and less battlefront. That's what I'm like, thinking. Yeah. I think it's going to be an adventure style game. Um, if you run into someone bad, then you got to escape and that like you get lives and hearts and things like that. And it's, I really hope they learned their freaking ridiculous lesson and did stay away from loot boxes and skins because I mean, action adventure games, they they don't have like skins and, and things well, like that. so I, I, it makes me think of um, like the Lego games, right? So it, instead of skins, it's, it's different characters. I mean, you could think of them as skins, Yeah. but the thing is you don't have to like win them in a lottery style yeah, purchase. Like, per, yeah, it's yeah, you, you just unlock them as you go through the game. Mm -hmm. And I think if they stick to more of that classic model of unlocking characters or skins or yeah, then they should powers or whatever it is, stages, whatever it happens to be, uh, that's that's what I want back. And I yeah. think, I don't know, I'm holding out hope. This might be... Hoping uh, it might be the one. I think a trailer is coming out at Celebration Yeah, this year. so in April, they're going to... Um, I don't think it's a trailer. I think it's like gameplay. Like people... Oh, like, like a demo. Yeah, come I, out think, a demo. I think it's a demo from what I've been reading. I may be wrong. <laughs> Um, okay, so Bad Weave said, so wait, this game is based on a previously unknown Padawan survivor from Anakin's Massacre. Previously unknown, unknown. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know who this character is, but I would guess, I would guess it's a brand new character. I hope it's a brand new character because we, they've already explored Kanan, who was in Rebels, who was a Padawan, who escaped Order 66, um, and, you know, Rebels, pretty much the entire cartoon series yeah, I, covered that. I yeah, I, I don't have any reason to believe that this is going to be a character we already know. Yeah. Uh, there's thousands and thousands of Jedi, and a, a couple hundred survived Order sixty six, yeah. probably. So, um, yeah, who knows? We'll we'll see. We'll see. We hope it is. All right. So, one last thing that I want to talk about for for like news items. The Mandalorian, if you guys have not heard of this, The Mandalorian is a TV show that is being developed right now uh, about action. Star Wars. Yeah, live, live action Star action. Wars television series. <laughs> it's the first ever. 
and it's coming to exclusively to the Disney Plus streaming service that I believe is available this fall. They wrapped filming on The Mandalorian, and I'm super excited. I, I talked like a month or two ago on RMP about The Mandalorian and how excited I was. Uh, Boba Fett growing up was my favorite character, and it wasn't because the depth of his character, it was because of the freaking Mandalorian armor. Like, how cool is that armor? Well, we get an entire television show of the main character wearing Mandalorian armor. But we don't, you know, I mean, is is he's not the Fett, so... Yeah, it can't be the Fett, because they've, re, you know, in the, the new canon, Boba Fett is not Mandalorian, so this is a... This is a, a an actual Mandalorian who is a gunfighter somewhere in the far reaches of space. It's going to take place uh, between the trilogies, I think, right? So, like, after Return of the Jedi, but before um, before Episode 7? I, I believe so, yeah. I'm not 100. I, don't quote me on that. I'm but not, either you know. way, I don't think it's going to matter a lot because it takes place, in, like, in a far-flung area of the galaxy that we've never explored before. Yeah. So it's going to be far away from the Skywalker saga and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so. towards the outer reaches where, you know, no one no one goes. Yeah. I, I've voiced this with you before. We've had this discussion, but it hasn't come up in a while. I'm skeptical. About having a live action Star Wars TV series. Which, okay, because we haven't had one yet. Yeah, it, it's, so. it is a new, it's a new concept. All the live action has been film on the big screen. Um, the cartoons, they always, you know, take a little bit of me to get into. Sure. Not a super huge fan of them at first. And then it's like, oh my God, I can't Then they become awesome. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how they're going to do it because to me, if you're going to do it live action, you can become a little more gritty and gruesome and mm. suddenly it turns into something that's less um, marketable to children. Yeah. Well, I think this, this show is probably going to be like a, like a PG PG 13 range Yeah, is what I'm thinking. Uh, there, I don't think there's ever going to be an R. Well, I was going to say, I, uh, I understand they're not gaming game of thrones it basically right. coined that phrase. By the way. <laughs> Games of, game of thrones -ing. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're doing that, but I would like to see, because like we, we got teased a lot in solo with the grittier side of mm. like smugglers and, and killers and assassins. Right. I kind of feel that that's going to be a little bit of the tone of it is kind of how I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it might have a little bit of firefly Ooh. tone to it. Kind of like, you know, rogues on the far flung reaches of the galaxy mm -hmm. trying to survive. Um, I, and I didn't think about it that way. The talent involved with this show has me really excited as well. Well past even the, the concept of the show. Uh, Fav John Favreau is the showrunner. Is for the this, showrunner, yeah. It, which is like his... Oh, sold. Like, yeah, like, all right, let's do it. Let's see what you got. <laughs> uh, but he's bringing in directors, or Lucasfilm anyway, he's bringing in directors, or did bring in directors because they've already wrapped on the season. Um. All kinds of people. Uh, Taika Waititi, who oh is he? Yeah, who directed oh. Thor Ragnarok and what we did in the shadow or what we do in the shadows and a bunch of other uh, like more indie style films. Uh, I cannot wait to see what what <laughs> what he, he did with that <laughs> because it's like he his brand of comedy has to be in there somewhere. Is the Mandalorian gonna like eat some magic? mushrooms or is he, gonna, <laughs> is he gonna smoke a death stick and yeah i don't i don't know <laughs> he's gonna um, trip out like what's going on yeah but there's there's so many people bryce dallas howard is directing an episode well you're uh, just you're she's just even... the daughter of ron howard who is the director of yeah. solo so mm -hmm. uh there, there's just a like an all-star cast or an all-star all like director director lineup list. i was about to yeah. say i'm looking at the cast here and the cast like i don't like so the guy playing the mandal hey, the titular uh mandalorian pedro pascal yeah pedro pascal uh game of thrones yeah. fans would know him uh from uh he uh prince oberon he was prince oberon and uh i thought his performance uh, as Prin prince oberon was fantastic and i cannot wait to see him in this role <laughs> so i mean i 
okay, I want them to prove me wrong. That's that's what I want. Yeah, I'm just I'm just excited <laughs> like a little boy. I cannot wait. Can't wait. Anything Star Wars, you're excited so, and a little boy. So speaking of being excited as a little boy, oh, so God. I watched something uh, a day or two ago. From uh, another little boy who's just yeah, nerdy so, and exciting as you. So you guys you guys remember Eric Foreman from that 70s show, right? Or maybe you remember him as as Venom uh, in the <sighs> trash uh, Spider-Man 3 movie from like forever ago. I thought we all forgot him. <laughs> <laughs> so to- Tover Grace is a uber Star Wars nerd. Like he and I would get along just fine, I think. He likes to make videos and he, he makes he Star Wars trailers. He took the original um, trilogy and cut it down to like edit it down to like an 85 minute movie. Yeah. Spliced it together and just. Yep. Like took out the, uh, the, the filler and like just made it a super exciting, uh, like a recut of the film. Well, he just a couple of days ago came out with this trailer called star Wars always. And it's basically a five minute trailer of the entire star Wars saga. Eight episodes 10 movies in whole oh yeah 10, because they did, did put do, they did, did put rogue solo. one and solo yeah in there so 10 movies as a whole and he's put together this trailer that perfectly perfectly shows what the star wars saga is all about at okay, least no, up to the, this point yeah the star wars universe it it's amazing. It is so freaking good. Like <laughs> Lucasfilm hire this dude to make something for you. <laughs> Pay him for for the, his talent. Um not only not only is it awesome by itself, but the way they set it up or the way they the way Topher sets this well, this trailer his, up. He and his friend, he didn't and, do this alone. Right. Yeah, and I don't not unfortunately I don't remember his friend's name. He's not famous to me. But <laughs> Uh, oh. Topher and his buddy oh. uh, made this trailer, and the, the the way that they set it up was basically a, a great lead in for Episode Nine, because it basically shows us Ray and her being the next Jedi, and what is she gonna do? Like that's mm. this is a wonderful lead in and you know hype vehicle for Episode Nine. I think. I- <sighs> I enjoyed it just because it made already like heart pulling scenes or like really important scenes such as like when Obi-Wan is killed Mm -hmm. and then it flashes to To Luke to Luke disappearing as well. And it's like so many things just made it stronger like Han like his storyline. Max Trollbot says if it's not four and a half minutes of Jar Jar, I'm not watching. Uh Get out the chat. Get out. Get out. Oh, geez. We are not a Jar Jar family here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so no. stay there, Max. Stay there, Max. Don't go anywhere. Um, no, I thought things were just so much stronger with, I can't remember the actor's name, Obi-Wan, Old Ben. Ewan McGregor? or um, Old Ben. Oh, Old Ben. You're talking about uh, Sir Alec Guinness. Sir Alec Guinness. Mm-hmm. So having his voice over in parts for the prequels and for the sequel yeah. trilogy that's happening right now. Totally. Because uh, it, it makes most it of so the prequels much stronger. Most of the prequels were based on Obi-Wan. things that Obi-Wan said. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I I fought in the Clone Wars and I was once a Jedi Knight like your father. You know, he you know great friend and blah 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 blah. Like the the, the prequels were basically just Showing us visuals of what Obi Wan already told Luke told that in Episode little, Four. That little story of yeah, he was the best starfighter in the galaxy, and then you see Anakin doing some, yeah. Hayden Christensen doing some awesome moves. Like, so I mean, it's I only watched it once, and the only the reason I watched it once was because I was just like, oh, so much power, just one viewing, and then I'll go back afterwards. Yeah. I yeah I've I've only watched it twice I think two or three times myself I'm I think as soon as this show wraps up I'm gonna watch it again because it's so freaking good I'm surprised you already I, don't well have I need up. I need to uh, I need to show it to Lucas I bet Lucas hasn't seen it he needs to see this yeah. <laughs> yep. um, okay so the next thing that we wanted to talk about really and we've kind of we've kind of danced around it a little bit so the anthology series or the Star Wars stories so originally Lucasfilm said. They're going to make three anthology films in addition to the three saga films. The, the, so episode seven, eight, 
and nine. The sequels. And then in between those movies releases, they were going to make anthology films. <laughs> so they, they decided uh, after throwing the word anthology around for a little while, they decided to change it to Star Wars stories. So the first one we got was Rogue One. Um, which was, so the anthology films were supposed to be like not part of the main saga, other stuff, other stories, right? But basically what these have become are like prequels or like They're background kind of stories or, of, almost origin. of the saga. Well, Solo definitely was more of an origin. Yeah. Not like we saw him. Oh, here's, he's being born and oh, here's how he was raised. And Yeah. So Rogue One was a like basically a, 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 a lead it like a almost a spy uh i don't know what you would call it like a it, like a spy thriller sort of ish uh, um <laughs> about stealing the death star plans yeah, right it, but it led directly into episode four yeah. which well it also describes too how they made the death star like who is the creator right. behind the death star and, and that and, was some of the most interesting parts to me of that of that movie was like the you know showing you know, how the Death Star was made, who actually made it, and how, mm. how, how, how. Like, that was... Yeah, why is it so strong and powerful? Right. Oh, it's because of this. And then, also, I wanted to point out, during Rogue One, we were introduced to um, the Kyber Crystal Temple. I don't remember what it's called, but it's a temple that's not for Jedi. It's not a Jedi temple. Are you it's talking not- about on Jedi? The okay. Mm-hmm. This temple for force users where they can worship. Where mm. it's the first time I think it was really introduced that it's like because people don't really well, like realize that Sith and Jedi are orders. They are like kind of religions that practice themselves. Yeah, well on Han Solo force. said something about a, a hokey old religion. Yes. Uh, so the concept of it being a religion isn't and we're, by any stretch new. We're introduced in Rogue One to this monk who's blind, who uses mm-hmm. the force to see, who I think has the, some of the most badass action scenes when he's killing all the stormtroopers pew, 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 without a lightsaber. He's just got his yep. freaking... No lightsaber and no eyesight. No, I, <laughs> just his freaking walking cane and yep. he's like being all badass. But he's also... The force is with me, like I'm one with the force. The force is like it. Yeah. So he's he's a devout follower. He just doesn't have the powers. And it and it just amazes me that he was there. He was included. And it made me really happy to see that. Yes, thank you, Squid. I am one with the force. The force is one with me. Uh yeah. So so yeah, that was a that was an interesting story, right? Mm-hmm. But it led directly into episode four. And then next they gave us solo. A Star Wars story, which was the origin story of Han Solo, how he met Chewbacca, how he got the Millennium Falcon, how he met Lando Carissi, how he got his blaster, how he did, like, how he got his name. How he got his name. (laughs) Like, that was a thing that no one was like, oh, yeah, no, Han Solo is his name. And then suddenly, like, Yeah, they they gave us origin story for things we didn't even think we needed origin stories for. (laughs) Origin story. Okay. Um, So, I mean, you you can critique the movie or whatever as much as you want yeah um but i enjoyed the hell out of that movie um it was a just a super fun adventurous ride um but also it took me to where i was always fond of the star wars galaxy whenever there was a fringe element right so the criminal underworld smugglers. bounty hunters smugglers um you know the the not the rebels in the empire but the other stuff that's going on. And this was a deep dive into that. Yep. And I loved it. I, I didn't have an issue with it. I mean, there were parts where it was slow. There were parts where it was like, oh, super exciting. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, my biggest takeaway, which I will forever hoard over your head, is I was right. <laughs> I was right. I was right. All right. So Steph and I. Ladies and gentlemen, I was right. I'm going to let you tell the story, but let me, let me set it up. So Steph and I and the boys watched all of the, uh, the Clone Wars cartoons and Rebels cartoons. And for those that, that don't know, uh, Darth Maul or Maul, sorry, uh, didn't die. Like as, as we know from, if you're a film watcher, uh, he did not die in the end of episode one. We, and we learn about it in clone wars and rebels mm-hmm. And the character of Maul 
it's expanded evolved greatly and hugely so to the point where like, and, I love him. Yeah, like he's he's a very interesting character um, as developed in the cartoon series mm-hmm. and before this movie <laughs> came out we were, we were Steph and I were like theorizing like ooh what do you think we're going to see oh he, yeah, well we we're, we know we're going to see that him meeting Chewbacca like what else do you think we're going to mm-hmm. see and you said I said not maybe not this movie but I want to see Maul on the big screen again I want to see him on the big screen. And Ken said, no, they're not going to do it They're They've done well, it. They've run him into the ground. No. Yeah. So, so my, my take was it, it, at the very least, it sure as fuck is not going to happen in solo because number one, I, right. what the hell would Maul have to do with solo's origin story? Number two, like uh, uh, mainstream audiences are just going to be confused. If you show Maul on the screen, they're going to be like, wait, this is fucking dumb because he died in episode one. Why are we seeing him? It's just going to confuse things. And like, that's, that's, that's <gasps> Steph. I'm sorry. That's dumb. He's not going to be, he's not going to be in solo. Guess who was right. <laughs> so we go to see the movie. Fast forward two hours. I get punched. No, I did not. <laughs> I physically, okay. I physically did not touch him. <laughs> the movie punched him because <laughs> uh, yeah. we're sitting next to each other and suddenly Maul pops up on the screen and Ken's just like, I could feel him like, <laughs> like <gasps> and I'm sitting there like trying to hold in all of this excitement. And I know he knows that I know that he knows that he's feeling <laughs> these feelings and I'm feeling my feelings and I'm just yeah, sitting there totally. trying not to be like, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> it was um wow. I was so excited and but now so disappointed with the news that oh, Solo 2 will not happen. Yeah, so th- they were set to do at least a trilogy for Solo. Of, of Solo. Yeah, and and do like some spin-offs from that like a like a Boba Fett origin story. And, uh, you know, and they would all be tied in like the Alden Ehrenreich, the guy that played Han Solo was supposed to cameo in, in the Boba Fett movie. And we, so there's a, a nerd theory right now that Boba Fett actually did cameo in the solo movie. Uh, well, I'll link to that article in the show notes as well. I'm not going to go into it here, uh, but it's an interesting theory and, uh, they were going to do this, this whole thing. And then of course with, with, uh, Maul and Crimson Dawn, uh, that whole thing and wherever that part of the saga goes with Kira and all of that, uh, it was going to be a whole series of films yeah. just in that type of setting. Han was going to get his own uh, but, saga. But, but Solo uh, Solo made a fuck ton of money for any movie coming out in movie theaters, but it did not make a fuck ton of, it did not make a fuck ton of, money for a star wars movie it actually did not even gross um worldwide uh it grossed less than what its budget was so i'm and i don't even know why because solo is not even that bad of a movie but it was just like i guess people went and saw it and then critics just garbaged it uh, see, it wasn't really critics. It was um, I don't, just internet well, assholes. Uh, yeah, I, actually, Squid is making a good point because some nerds can't just enjoy a movie. Exactly. Yep. It, well, see, in my my opinion of why it didn't make a lot of money, uh, well, it did make a lot of money. Let me get that clear. So it, it, it did make a lot of money, but why it didn't make the expected Star Wars money is because because it came out three months after. Episode eight came out. Yeah. So we a little bit of Star Wars fatigue. Well, that but and it also, came out the same month that Infinity War came out. Yeah, but also episode eight has been one of the most trashed movies of all time. Not because the movie sucks, but because like Squid pointed out, some nerds can't just enjoy a movie. Um uh, so anyway, some toxic culture uh we're not gonna talk about episode, the hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, episode on. eight suffered from some toxic culture uh, backlash and right on the heels of that, they released solo and it was just unfortunate timing. Um, but again, I'll say it again. That being said, solo still made a bucket of money, like the ton Two, of money worldwide. It but, was $237 million, but their budget was 
or yeah, I'd said million, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, their budget was two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah. No, no, it's 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 made more. It's made its money back. So I mean, but that was only the first one hundred days in theaters, right? But at the same time, it's not what they expected because all of the other movies made like. Yeah. So as a result of of the uh, less than uh, expected earnings, they decided to, well, as as Disney likes to say, we are focusing on other projects at this time, uh, which <laughs> basically means they have shelved all of the sequels and tie-in movies for Solo. Uh, so that doesn't mean though that they're not going to go with the third one. Are they, did they shot? I don't know. Third? Like nothing has been announced. We were so promised three stories. Rogue One Solo has come out. So are we going to get a third story? Mm-hmm. Are we? Well, and that's that's remains to be seen because after Episode Eight, we don't know what's coming next. Yeah. Um, episode Eight, of course, comes out at the end of this year, and we would expect nine sometime the fall. Or nine, sorry. Uh, a year from that, or sometime in the next year, we would get the next anthology film or, or a Star Wars story, uh, but nothing's been announced. Uh, there's been rumors about an Obi-Wan movie, um, of course, the, the aforementioned uh, Boba rumors Fett. of Boba Fett, um, but I think when they when they shelved the Boba Fett movie is when they decided, you know what, let's do a TV show that's going to give people the same nerd feels as a Boba Fett movie, and mm-hmm. that's why they gave us the Mandalorian TV show. That's my guess. I'd be super shocked if we got a Boba Fett film like any time in the near future. Yeah, that's I, anything that deals with um, anything that's the grind, grimy underworld of Star Wars that like you were talking about, you know, smugglers and, and thieves and all of that. I think we would it probably would stay away because I think they're kind of putting two and two together that, you know, like the gringy grimy was maybe what people didn't like. But of course, yeah. It could just be that people are in love with the Skywalker story, which is the original, the prequels, and the sequels. Yeah. All three, all eight episodes we've had so far is focused around mm-hmm. this one family squabble that is essentially destroying the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, so so we get one more movie in one the more. Skywalker saga, and then they're done. They're done. With, uh, yeah. Uh, there are three more, tri- or I'm sorry, two more trilogies on deck. We don't really know what they're going to be about other than that. They're not going to be Skywalker saga. Mm-hmm. We've got Ryan Johnson. So the guy that made episode, episode eight. eight, he's getting a trilogy. It's going to be some other place in the galaxy with characters we've never met, etc. Which I think would be best. And, like do something new. And Benny off and wise of, of game of Thrones fame has been given a trilogy. Mm-hmm. Again, we have no idea if there's going to be a rated R Star Wars. It's probably going to come from those guys. Um, but, Do it. But we don't know. Make we don't know happen. what they're going to be. So Do it. those movies aside, let's say you were assigned by Kathleen Kennedy to be in charge of the anthology films and you got to pick the next the next anthology film. What what would that story be? I want the first Jedi oh, or the first Sith Lord. Like I want to go back to ancient, ancient times when people started realizing that, that like the force could be controlled. And mm. then the Jedi, they created the Jedi order and this religion and in its beginnings, I want to see that. And okay. then the discovery of like, Oh, there's an opposite of me. There's an evil of me. I want to see the beginning. That's, that's, that's what, fascinating. That's I would, what I, I would love see. to, I would love to see that as well. <laughs> I think it would be super cool. <laughs> so, uh, my, my thoughts about the, uh, the future of anthology films, I would love to see them do, uh, like experiment a little bit because they have played it really safe with the Star Wars movies. I mean, say, you know, people will say what they want about, uh, you know, Rogue One being to this or Solo being to that or Episode Eight being to that. We already knew how Rogue One was going to end. Of course we knew how Rogue One was going to end. But they, but they are playing it very safe, very uh, in galaxy, just like, just like this, right? Like Kathleen yes. is trying to honor George's original vision and and keep it just like that. George right? George is not in so, the picture anymore. Explore. So right. So what <laughs> I would like to see 
similar to what we've seen with the MCU, we get very different styles of films, right? So we, we get Iron Man, which is just like a, you know, straight up adventure superhero film, right? But then we get things like, like Guardians of the Galaxy or Ant-Man that are just as much comedy as they are like action. Yes. And, you know, et cetera, et cetera, like the different genres of, of film, but still in the superhero Mm-hmm. Marvel world. I would like to see Star Wars films do something similar. Like give give um oh gosh, who are the who are the directors? Uh Lord and Miller, uh the original directors for solo yeah. um of Lego movie fame and many, many other films. Uh they were fired from solo because they were getting too they, adventurous. Yeah, they were putting too much of their own flavor into mm-hmm. the movie and Kathleen and the company mm-hmm. panicked and said, no, 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 You're getting way too off script. You know, it actually makes me wonder if they would have <laughs> kept them if Solo would have done better. What do you mean? Oh, if, if they, if the movie would have done better, yeah, had, if, 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 if had they, they have, not brought in Ron Howard? Yeah. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying anything against Ron Howard because well, Ron yeah, Howard is great. However, he's stuck with the, the classic, Right. George Lucas esque direct. Right. So, but I would like to see some experimentation like that. Like bring bring Lord and Miller back to make the movie that they want to make set in the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. Bring Taika Waititi in to d- direct a Star Wars movie. I mean, he's getting an episode of The Mandalorian. Well, so okay, so we are getting that experimentation in a baby format. And that's what I yeah. So that's what I'm I'm hoping that the TV show does is is like gives different directors of voice gives different writers a chance to say something in the star Wars universe mm-hmm. with different styles. And so not only are we getting the Mandalorian, but the, they've also announced a Cassian Andor TV series. Yeah. It was supposed to be like a, supposed to be like a, a spy drama or something like that. Like how he became, how, and, what he became. Yeah. And I don't know if it's an one. origin story for him or if it's just a, like the adventures of Cassian kind of just like, you know, <laughs> Oh, this week on the adventures of Cassian, we find our hero uh, trapped in a, you know, <laughs> Something like that it could be fun, you know, and if they if they do that with, with some experimentation, I, I think it would be freaking awesome. Squid is mentioning something. He says, I want a rogue squadron trilogy like the books. Totally. There totally. is Alphabet Squadron that is coming out April? Something? Uh, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Alphabet so Squadron is something that was introduced in Rebels. Yeah. Uh, which is, it's very similar to Rogue Squadron. Um, and I don't know if you've squid. I don't know if you have read the book. Oh, you did say that you liked the books. Yeah. I've, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Rogue Squadron would be fantastic for a TV show. Yeah, I uh, actually, you say, you say a Rogue Squadron trilogy. That could be cool too. I want it as a TV show, like put Wedge and Tilly's as like the main protagonist mm-hmm. and just Let run him, with it for yeah. as many seasons as it as it's good as it can go um my thing is is like with with the books that they're pulling these squadron and they're making the books war now mind you i never read what is called legends or legacy legacy legends 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 yeah Um, yeah so the old canon before the pre-disney canon i have only read everything that's canon except for two books i'm missing two books and the stuff that's coming. Yeah, but you'll get to them. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you will get to them. They're in my shopping cart right now. <laughs> um, no, so I haven't read those. However, I have read the Squadron books that have come out. So like Inferno Squadron and um, yeah, I can't remember the other one, but I've read them and I liked Inferno Squadron. And I actually kind of like if we're playing with the idea of TV series and and playing with let's experiment Let's twist it. Inferno Squadron was everything is from the point of view of an Imperial soldier. Right. Yep. So instead of like, oh, the rebellion, we're all good. So let's say it's (laughs) Sopranos in space. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I would I would actually kind of enjoy seeing something like that because Mm -hmm. I the book itself threw me for a loop because I was like, wait, what? Like they actually think they're doing good and that the rebels are the ones who are attacking them. And it really made you think differently about how politics and government and, and how people think on their own level when it comes to we're at war. 
So yeah. I enjoyed it a so, lot. And it, I think it would be cool. So re- regardless of, of where they go with the anthology films or the TV series, I am looking forward to it. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot wait. Uh, that's about all the time that we have for our, our discussion. I hope you guys enjoyed us talking about Star Wars. Uh, let us know. Uh, Steph, if, if people want to let you know what they thought about your appearance, where would they go to do that? Well, once a month, <laughs> there's this place I go and hang out. A lot of you are already in the chat. Do do meet up for, for a movie party. Um, we have not. Poodle, uh, Poodle Puncher and I kind of host the the movie party Mm -hmm. and um we have not scheduled this month's or march's uh party yet i'm sure Mm -hmm. within the next several days we'll have that up but if people want to just like keep up with it and and find out when it's announced where would they go for that yeah so you movieparty.net is a good place to start okay uh and you can also like uh at dc tv movie party i believe is what our twitter handle is okay um and also like me personally if you have an issue with me don't at me bro but you can at me (laughs) uh it's at at her bro (laughs) it's at saucyan it's however you want to spell it (laughs) no 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 no. if it's it's on twitter it's very specific in the spelling s-a-s-c-i E N N E. Yeah, I, I, I think I think Justin ever. Robert Young pronounced oh it Sazine. Sazine. Dude, some somebody did clip it, and I think it's gonna haunt me forever. Like, it's just going to. Yeah. So, uh, Diamond Club Movie Party's Twitter handle is actually at DC Movie Party. My apologies. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Hit hit Sazine up on Twitter. Uh, check out the movie party. It's a once a once a month thing that's always always a good time uh if you are interested in hitting me up i am at del noche (laughs) shit i was about to read amos's line (laughs) i'm actually at rm underscore del noche i'm at del noche or del noche and like almost every other platform yeah um out there so so check me out um, if you, uh, so speaking of Amos, if you want to follow what he's got going on, he is at Ethan Kane on Twitter. Um, otherwise check out ritual misery at ritual misery on Twitter, or just head over to ritual misery.com and you will find out, uh, everything that we've got going on over there. We are live every Thursday at 7 PM Pacific. Theoretically. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I will say it the way that Amos likes to say it. We are. We are live ish every Thursday ish at 7 p.m. ish Pacific time <laughs> on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. I want to thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to uh, not do that, um, to use his music. Um, if he can find. This is what happens <laughs> when Kent runs a show. <laughs> Damn it, I was doing so good too. You are doing very Where well. Where did it go? I don't I, think I don't think you even brought it up, honey. There it is. There it is. Okay. So <laughs> good lord. <laughs> anyway, so we want to thank if this, if this Kevin is- McLeod for uh, allowing us to use his music. Um head over to incompetech.com to check out his wonderful talents. Um but thank you for listening for Amos, the absent Amos, for me, for Sassian, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> oh my god. You fucked up so bad.